Welcome, my name is Henry Singleton and I have decided to start a vlog on Ipswich Town Football Club. It's something I've been thinking about doing for a little while now and I thought why not give it a go. Um, please do forgive me on things like editing light and sound because I don't really know what I'm doing with that at the moment but hopefully things will improve uh, as we go on. As I hope will the fortunes of Ipswich Town Football Club. That is so slick isn't it? Um, and I'm slightly conscious that I'm starting this and I'm annoyed that I'm starting this vlog at a time when things aren't great at Ipswich. So please do forgive me if this isn't the most positive of starts, but as I say, hopefully as time goes on, things will improve and we'll have more positive things to talk about. Um, so I'm gonna start off this vlog. It's gonna be quite nice and brief, but I'm gonna talk about the FA Cup third round defeat to Sheffield United on Saturday. And we're out the FA Cup again. Uh, we haven't won an FA Cup game since 2010, I believe. We've never won an FA Cup game under Mick McCarthy. And it would have been nice, wouldn't it, as we always say, to have a cup run and have a bit of a distraction from the league form, especially as we seem to be slipping once more into mid-table obscurity. Um, but it wasn't to be. I think Mick has always, if we're being honest, has seen the cup competitions as a distraction rather than um, something that's going to galvanise the team and create a winning habit as as cup competitions can do. He spoke before the game how the last thing he wanted um, was a replay, which is fair enough, especially when you look at the injury list that we have at the moment. Um, but just the performance was so flat on Saturday against Sheffield United. I will mention I'm a season ticket holder as well, so hopefully I have some sort of idea of what I'm talking about. But I'm not going to go into too much detail about the actual match against Sheffield United, because if you were there, you will know that it was very, very, very boring. Um, no real quality from a team that was fairly strong. This wasn't a team of 18-year-olds such as played in the Carabao Cup against Crystal Palace earlier in the season. This was a team of mostly uh, first-team players, guys that should be able to, uh, to produce something better than they did on Saturday. There was just a complete lack of creativity. The final pass wasn't there, and we ended up not even having a shot on target. Um, and I, what I will talk about more so rather than performance is Mick McCarthy's once again strange comments after the match. Uh, so, you know, 12,000 or so fans came out on a cold January afternoon uh, to come and watch their side play. And they were treated to, to an awful performance. And in the post-match press conference, Mick McCarthy, when asked about the game, said he wasn't unhappy with the performance. I just, I just wonder what he thinks sometimes. I mean, he needs a PR, PR guy to be kind of helping him along and telling him what to say because at times he just says some strange things. Um, a couple of examples of that this season, if we look back to the one that sticks in the mind is the Burton Albion game away, which we eventually won and the fans have been chanting for Burton Albion to come on throughout the whole game. He eventually did come on and he scored the winner with a free kick. And Mick McCarthy said after the game that the more the fans ask for Chilean to come on, the less likely he is to put him on. And it's just childish comments like that that really kind of put fans offside. So that was one strange comment that he said after the game against Sheffield United. Um, and I just felt that he kind of, there was an air of acceptance with Mick McCarthy after the game on Saturday. He wasn't his usual kind of northern bonkers self where he comes out and... Um, gives it the bigger and he kind of did accept it. I mean, what else could he do? Uh, I think Stuart Watson, the local news reporter for, for the East Anglian Daily Times, put, put the general mood of the fans to him. We're out the FA Cup once more. We're now stepping into mid-table. It looks like in the transfer windows there's going to be more outgoings and incomings and things are looking pretty bleak. Um, and Mick basically did accept that. He said that, that fans are sick of the same old, which I think is, is about right. Uh, personally, I just want to say that we are sick of the same old, but my feelings and my frustrations don't necessarily lie with Mick McCarthy. Yes, he says some strange things in press conferences, and yes, his football is pretty boring, but my opinion still is, and this is different to most Ipswich Town fans, I think, my opinion is still is that until Marcus Evans decides to fund a manager, I still think Mick McCarthy is probably the best man for the job. If you look at what he's done since he's taken over, he kept us up in the first year when we were in seriously dire straits. He's got us in the playoffs somehow, which was remarkable. 
We then finished, I think, about seventh. And yes, last season was very poor. But I think January, if you look at, at how things have gone, I mean, he's also bought in some players for very cheap and sold them on. Um, he's bought players last summer like Waghorn and Garner, very cheap, who have done very well. And I just am of the opinion that it's not his fault. I think he does the best that he can with, with the money that he's given on a shoestring budget. And the guy I want to talk about today is Marcus Evans, because I think he is where the problem lies, to be honest. And I think if you look at it throughout his 10 years that he's had at the club, we've just moved backwards. Uh, he took over in 2007. He, ended, he started by sacking Jim and Gilton far too quickly when we were playing good football and we were on the edge of the playoffs. He then appointed two managers who were awful in Roy Keane and Paul Jewell. They both were given quite a lot of money to spend uh, and they spent it so badly on the likes of Lee Bowyer, Jimmy Bullard, J. Manu Thomas, Michael Tropper, players on very high wages that ultimately flopped. And then he bought in Mick McCarthy. And Mick McCarthy, I think, I think Mark Sevens made it very clear to him as soon as he came in that there was going to be a completely different approach. He wasn't going to give them lots of money and it was going to be a far more kind of frugal approach going forward. Uh, and I think Mick has accepted that. Um, but he, is, he has, since Mick McCarthy, has come in consistently underfunded the club. And I just want to read out, I've, got, I've written down a few things here with regard to Marcus Evans and, and some of the things that have gone on since he's been at the club. So supposedly the club's debts have tripled, uh, season tickets have been reduced massively, I mean not in terms of price, they've gone up <laughs> in terms of the number of people buying season tickets. We've had one playoff um, attendance in 10 years, that's all we've had to get excited about. Uh, he has consistently underfunded the club if you look at it, especially when you see other clubs like Wolves. I mean, fine, he's not. I don't expect him to be spending tens of millions of pounds on players, but at least put some more in. Because if you're not going to do that, and if Mark Evans isn't going to do that, get someone else in that is, because we're not going anywhere as it is. And I just feel like at the moment, more than ever, there's a complete lack of cohesion between the club and the fans. From Marcus Evans, today as I, as I do this video, he's just signed a, a shirt sponsorship deal with a gambling company since to, which will last I think until 2021. And it just sends the completely wrong message. Why are we associating ourselves with a gambling company? When so many people are struggling with gambling addiction at the moment, it just doesn't send out the right message. We never see Marcus Evans. If you look at a club like Huddersfield and Dean Hoyle, I think it is, he's just a focal point for the club and there's a real connection. He's a local guy. As to be fair, I think Marcus Evans is. I think originally he is a Suffolk boy. But we never see him. He never comes out and talks. He speaks through guys like Ian Milne, the, uh, the managing director, and before that, Simon Clegg. Neither of which, by the way, have any footballing experience. I don't know why he's never brought in a managing director that has some kind of experience within the game. So that's my Marcus Evans rant over with. By the way, we'll just, I'm going to try and put a positive in here. And that is, um, I was really pleased to see Luke Hyam come back the other day. When there's been so much injury news, so much uh, bad things, especially in the midfield. Teddy Bishop, the latest, the latest um, on the injury table to be out for a long time. So I was really glad to see Luke Hyam back, and he actually was probably the standout player against Sheffield United on Saturday. So I'm going to get my bit of positive news in there because there's not much else to be positive about. I want to talk about transfer news before I finish today. Um, and as I said at the beginning, it certainly seems like there's more outgoings that are going to happen than incomings. Kiefer Moore is a strange one, in my opinion. We bought him very cheaply from Forest Green uh, for 20 grand, and he made a couple of substitute appearances, didn't really hit it off, which is fine, and we sent him out on loan. When you send a player out on loan, I would have thought the idea is that, the, the hope is that they go out, perform, in his case as a striker, score lots of goals, come back, ready to go, ready to fight for his first team place. So he did go out, he did score lots of goals, and for some reason, I don't know what the reason is, we decided not to give him a go in the first team squad, and instead sell him on straight away. Uh, again, more strange comments from Mick McCarthy, um, that apparently, as fans, well, we never liked him anyway, and whenever he did come on, we were very sarcastic whenever he won a header. 
Mick often looks at a very small minority of fans and kind of blows that way out of proportion and looks at it um, and thinks that every single fan thinks the same. I certainly didn't notice fans particularly having a go at Keith Moore when he was at the club, but there we go. And apparently he came back to training Kiefer Moore and his head wasn't there, which, okay, fair enough. I guess he doesn't think he's going to get a fair crack of the whip ahead of uh, Waghorn and Ghana. But slightly strange, I think, from the club's point of view, not to give him a go, but there we are. We've sold him on for an undisclosed fee, but I believe that was in the region of 750 grand to Barnsley. And I hope that, and I feel like it will be, another case of... Um, a player that we let go coming back to bite us, as has happened with Jordan Rhodes and Jack Marriott in recent times. But we shall see. So best of luck to Kiefer Moore. Um, I am pleased. Here's another slight positive. I'm pleased that the Bartos Bielkowski rumours and him moving on have kind of quietened down in recent weeks. It seemed at one point that there was interest from Crystal Palace. Mick McCarthy actually said that he rang up Crystal Palace to ask them directly what their intentions were with Bartos and... I think their answer was that he was on a short list of about 6 to 12 players, so he's by no means kind of their concrete number one target, which is good to hear. I think if we let him go, he really would be struggling. He's been man of the match on countless um, uh, times this season and in, in the last kind of year or so, especially as we brought him in for a free. He's, he's been a great addition, and I would be very, very sad to let him go unless we got a really good deal for him. I think, by the sounds of things, he's really happy at the club. I think him and his family are settled in Suffolk and he really loves, loves playing for Ipswich, which is really good. Um, so I'm glad that those kind of rumours have quieted down in recent times. The other one is uh, Dave McGoldrick. Kind of a strange one with him. Um, I'm not really too sure how to feel about that one if he was to go. I think Carth would be interested in him. His contract's up in the summer and there is no option... Um, on his contract for the club to uh, to extend that as there is on a number of other other players. Um, yes, on his day he can be very effective. Uh, he's one of those players that we kind of lack, I think. So it is good to have him. He he offers something a bit different. He can create something out of nowhere. But we all know that he's injury prone. Uh, he's not the most consistent. He's one of those players that will turn up when he wants to, um, and he's getting a bit older. And I kind of feel like a fresh start is needed from uh, himself and, and the club as a whole. So I think maybe that wouldn't be the end of the world if he was to, to be let go. It seems to me at the moment like Marcus Evans is trying to get rid of some players and he's not going to be looking to spend any money at the moment because he knows that Mick McCarthy's contract's up in the summer and he's trying to kind of trying to free up a bit of money for a new manager that comes in in the summer that we'll have to spend, which, okay, you can understand it from a business point of view. Um, Tommy Smith is the other one that looks like he might be on his way, I think. has been spoken about the Colorado Rapids room for him, which on the face of it sounds like a bit of a random one, but I think the connection there is the ex-New Zealand manager um, is the manager of Colorado Rapids, so you can see why Tommy Smith is, uh, is interested in that one. And again, a case of probably a fresh start. He's been at Ipswich since he was a boy. He's, he's given some great service to Ipswich. But again, I wouldn't be totally disappointed to see him go. I don't think he's a player that's going to get us out of the championship. And again, he's pretty injury prone. Yes, it is always nice to see a local lad um, do well, but I don't think personally, um, that I would be too bothered about him going. The only thing I would say about that is it would be slightly strange to let him go in January at the moment because if you look at our, our centre-back options, they're pretty limited with, I think, Luke Chain is the only recognised centre-back at the club at the moment with uh, with the injuries we've got to the likes of Adam Webster. Jonas Knudsen can, can obviously play there and he's done well when he has played there, but I think wait for the summer if we are going to let Tommy Smith go. In terms of incomings, it seems pretty quiet, doesn't it? I think there's been a few names banded around, like uh, Anthony Pilkington, I think, and maybe a couple of others, I think another lad from Barnsley. But it seems pretty quiet, and I don't think it looks like um, there'll be much going on. Thank you very much for watching today. I am sorry this has been a fairly downbeat first vlog, but that is just the way things are at the moment. I would just like to get your opinions on a couple of things I've talked about today. So let me know where your frustrations lie. Are they with Mick McCarthy or are they with Marcus Evans or the players? Obviously, they have to take some responsibility. Uh, please do give this channel a like and subscribe. And follow me on Twitter, which is, I believe, at Henry underscore Singleton. 
Uh, I will be making the trip to Portland Road on Saturday to watch Ipswich Town against Leeds and I will be praying for three points. I'll catch up with you after then and thank you very much for watching.